This is Spring Theory, the mousetrap car on determining a gear ratio to match the wheels, which translates to engineering the mousetrap car to meet your distance of travel needs. So don't just take what you get, create what you need. There are various resources available to help you build an easy DIY mousetrap car, but not so much information on designing and engineering a mousetrap car to meet specific performance requirements. So, if you're building a mousetrap car for a school project, or if you want a winning score with your car at a mousetrap car competition, be sure to know all the factors in the scoring formula so you can design to the scoring formula and get what you need. If the emphasis is on distance of travel of the mousetrap car, then you are in the right place. Generally, the farther the car travels, the higher the performance score. So here we are with the walkthrough on designing and engineering a mousetrap car to get the distance outcome you need. So get your calculator ready, because we can't do this without some simple math. Hi, I'm Dawn DeWitt. Charles Tharp and I have many years experience with mousetrap cars and we will share information with you that will help you design a mousetrap car to do what you need it to do. Stick with us to the end of the video. We think you'll find it a good use of your time. We hope you'll like the video, share with friends, and subscribe to our channel so that you'll be notified as new material becomes available because mousetrap cars do not grow on trees. In the Spring Theory video, The Mousetrap Car, on string wraps, wheel circumference, and introduction to gears, we discussed how to predict the distance a mousetrap car will travel using the known variables of gear multiplier, circumference of the drive wheel, and the number of string wraps using the formula D equals GCW. This lesson is about creating a car to travel a known distance with specific wheels. Therefore, distance, wheel circumference, and number of string wraps are the known factors used to determine G, the gear multiplier. The selected wheel provides a known circumference, the length of the bale and axle diameter produce a known number of string wraps. This enables us to determine the necessary gear ratio or gear multiplier G for the known factors. The formula then becomes G equals D divided by C times W. Let's work out an appropriate gear multiplier based on the variables. Suppose we want the mousetrap car to travel about two-thirds the length of a standard basketball court, which is about 1,600 centimeters. Therefore, distance D will be a fixed value, 1,600 centimeters. To solve for G, the gear multiplier, G equals distance D set at 1,600 centimeters divided by wheel circumference times the number of string wraps. Now, about those wheels. Circumference is calculated using the formula 2 pi r. Logically, we can hypothesize that if a bigger wheel circumference is used, then a lower or smaller gear multiplier is needed to travel 1600 centimeters. Conversely, the smaller the wheel circumference, the higher or bigger the gear multiplier needs to be to travel the same distance. The circumference of the wheel becomes a fixed value to be used in the formula G equals D divided by C times W. From experience, we know that without extending the bale of the mousetrap and with a certain size axle, we can get approximately 10 string wraps. So for ease of calculation, the variable W, number of string wraps, will be fixed at 10. Suppose you want to use a standard CD as the drive wheel. The CD has a diameter of 12 centimeters, a radius of 6 centimeters, and a circumference of approximately 37.7 centimeters. To solve for G, the gear multiplier, based on the fixed values that I previously defined, G equals D, which will be 1600 centimeters, divided by C times W, 37.7 centimeters, times 10 wraps, equals 377 centimeters. This yields a gear ratio or gear multiplier of approximately 4.2. So how do you get a gear multiplier of 4.2 or something close to 4.2? 
Knowing how many teeth each of the gears has is important in this phase of the mousetrap car engineering process. So count the teeth on each gear and then find the ratio between gears in a pair by dividing the number of teeth on the driver or input gear by the number of teeth on the driven or output gear. Consider a set of five gears, each having a different number of teeth, 58, 40, 30, 24, and 12, for example. So if the driver gear is the 58 and the driven gear is the 12, dividing 58 by 12 yields a gear multiplier of 4.83. Pairing of 40 to 12 produces a gear multiplier of 3.33. Notice that a 58 to 58 pairing produces a gear multiplier of 1, as does every other pairing of the same gears, and therefore does not offer any mechanical advantage other than a change in direction of the force. So which pair of gears would you choose? Remember, there are trade-offs with all the choices that you make. Only one of these pairings produces a gear multiplier that is enough for the CD wheel to go 1600 centimeters. Since the 58 to 12 pairing produces a gear multiplier of 4.83, it's a little above the needed 4.2, it should produce a distance greater than 1600 centimeters. Let's see what the math reveals. D equals GCW. So 4.83 times 37.7 centimeters times 10 string wraps equals approximately 1,820 centimeters. None of the other pairings produces a gear multiplier that gets close enough to this predetermined distance. So this would be an acceptable compromise. Suppose you want to use a smaller drive wheel such as a mini CD. The mini CD has a diameter of approximately 8 centimeters and a circumference of approximately 25.1 centimeters. To calculate the gear multiplier G equals D, which is 1600 centimeters, divided by C times W, 25.1 centimeters times 10, which is 251 centimeters, yielding a gear multiplier of approximately 6.37, which is larger due to the smaller circumference of the mini CD wheel. Suppose you want to use this spoke tobby wheel as the drive wheel. This wheel has an approximate diameter of 3.5 centimeters and an approximate circumference of 10.99 centimeters. So to get the gear multiplier, G equals D divided by C times W, 1600 centimeters divided by 10.99 centimeters times 10 equals 109.9 centimeters, yields a gear multiplier of approximately 14.6 which is considerably higher than the previous examples due to its smaller circumference. Review the gear multipliers produced from the previously reviewed gear pairings. None produces a gear multiplier above 4.83. Without gears with more teeth, a large enough gear multiplier cannot be produced by a single gear pair from this set of gears, hence the limitations of a single pair of gears. These simple calculations illustrate that you can determine the performance of a mousetrap car by making predictions using math before you build. Work like an engineer. Use math and be deliberate in the components that you select to create the mousetrap car that you need because it matters. There are many variables that affect the performance of the mousetrap car and there are trade-offs that you make with each option that you choose. Deliberately selecting the gear ratio to match your wheels and number of string wraps can improve the results. So how do you make this happen? You must look at the gears you have available and create a gear pairing chart. And yes, more than one pair of gears can be used, but that will have to wait for another lesson. This has been Spring Theory the Mousetrap Car on determining a gear ratio to match the wheels for your mousetrap car. We hope you found this information useful enough to save to watch again later and to share with your friends. Please click the like button and subscribe to our channel so that you will have direct access to new Spring Theory content as it becomes available. Until next time, because mousetrap cars do not grow on trees.